What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I am Nick here with Ryan and Ty. What's up? I mentioned in the Deftones video that you and me will be going on vacation. Ryan, you won't be there, but you will be there in spirit. <laughs> so by the time you guys see this, we will be on the beach. So today I was trying to think of music that reminds me of the beach. Jimmy Buffett. You could go that route. <laughs> when I think of the beach, I think of surf music, like surf rock. And when I think of surf rock, I think of Dick Dell. You heard it right. <laughs> Dick Dell. Does Dick Dell ring a bell? No, it doesn't. I've never heard of this name. Richard Anthony Monsoor, known professionally as Dick Dell, was an American rock guitarist. He was the pioneer of surf music, and he was also known as the king of surf guitar, which was also the title of his second album. He was one of the most influential guitarists of all time, and especially of the early 1960s. Most of the leading bands in surf music, such as the Beach Boys, Jan and Dean, and the Trash Men, were influenced by Dell's music and often included recordings of Dell's songs in their albums. By the way, the Trash Men is that group that does Surf and Bird. He also influenced Jimi Hendrix, Pete Townsend, Eddie Van Halen, and Brian May. If you're influencing those guys, uh, you're doing something yeah, right. Yeah, because are some of the <laughs> biggest ones ever. He has also been mentioned as one of the fathers of heavy metal. Many credit him with tremolo picking, a technique that is now widely used in many musical genres. Working together with Leo Fender, he also pushed the limits of electric amplification technology helping to develop new equipment that was capable of producing thick and previously unheard volumes, including the first ever 100-watt guitar amplifier. He also pioneered the use of portable reverb effects. If you're someone that uses reverb, give thanks to Dick Dell, because he's either one of the first or the guy that created it. This man is Benjamin Franklin of rock. Yeah. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin. Okay. The use of his recording, Miserloo, which is the song we're doing today, by Quentin Tarantino in the film Pulp Fiction, led to his return in the 1990s, marked by four albums and world tours. He also won a Grammy for Best Rock Instrumental for the song Pipeline with Stevie Ray Vaughan. And again, that's another indicator. If Stevie Ray Vaughan wants to make a song with you, enough said. He was born in Boston, Massachusetts. He was of Lebanese and Polish descent. At a young age, he learned to play the piano and the trumpet, as well as a ukulele, after having become influenced by Hank Williams. Later on, he learned how to play guitar. His family moved to El Segundo, California, and he learned how to surf at age 17. As a Lebanese American, he retained a strong interest in Arabic music, which later played a major role in his development of surf rock music. And here's a quote that I'm actually really fond of. He said, there was a tremendous amount of power I felt while surfing, and that feeling of power was simply transferred into my guitar. So his playing style reflected the experience he had when surfing, and he projected that power of the ocean to people. Sadly, he passed away in 2019 at the age of 81. And like I said, we are reacting to Miserloo today. It might be the most famous surf rock song of all time. I know it. Okay. So I didn't it know right it there. by the name or the person. Yeah. But when you said Pulp Fiction, I immediately knew what you were talking about. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm willing to bet that you'll probably hear some parts that are familiar yeah. to you as well. Right? Black Eyed Peas. Yeah, they sampled the, the song as well. Now, here is something I did not know. The word Miserloo actually means Egyptian woman. It was actually a folk song from the Eastern Mediterranean region with origins in the Ottoman Empire. The original author of the song is not known, but Arabic, Greek, and Jewish musicians were playing it by the 1920s. Dell remembered seeing his uncle play Miserloo on one string of the oud, oud, yeah. <laughs> which is a short neck lute type pear shaped fretless stringed instrument. Matter of fact, we'll put a picture right here. That is the oud. Nice oud. He vastly increased the song's tempo to make it into rock and roll. It was Dell's surf rock version that introduced Miserloo to a wider audience in the U.S. So that's pretty crazy, because this is essentially a rendition of a song that's over 100 years old. It was released in 1962, and this might be the oldest song we've ever done on the channel, by the way. But we're going to do a live performance. I know that the studio is fantastic. That's what you heard in Pulp Fiction. This live version, it's a little longer, and uh, we get to see him play. This is going to be from 1995 on the show Later with Jules Holland. So here we go. This is Dick Dell, Miserloo.
That's crazy that somebody can do that. Oh, yeah, my. It is. My hand would be hurting. Yeah. Just cramped. Uh, my hand would have cramped. Two seconds in. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see why they call him the king. Yeah, I mean, when, when this song starts, though, I'm just like, yeah, let's go. I'm ready, baby. <laughs> I think that's why it was a genius decision to put this in the opening credits of Pulp Fiction. I mean, after that first scene, when this song plays, you're like, oh, whoa, I'm in for something good. And when I hear it, it just makes me want to get demolished by a wave. Isn't that the best part of swimming in the ocean, though? She's getting waxed by the waves. You know, you're talking about like a, just a baby wave. We're not talking about the surfing waves that he be surfing. Oh, uh, that, that's a whole different wave. <laughs> that is a different. Wave. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Those surfing waves, they just well, you will get thraxed. <laughs> no, no, no. I I really do enjoy it when a giant wave arrives uh, and it just absolutely kills you. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> or as Ty would say, it thraxes you. Oh, yeah. It does thrax you. It just thraxes you all the way to the shore. <laughs> your trunks might fall off. Oh. That has happened. You have water in your nose. You have sand in your eyes and in all of your crevices. And uh, you slice your toe on a seashell. I mean, I just, I can't get enough of it. <laughs> I love it. By the way, his strings here are actually re-stringed. So instead of it being Eddie ate dynamite, goodbye Eddie, it's actually Eddie by good dynamite. Yeah, you get the point. Inverted. But the reason they're like that is because when he first learned the guitar, he was playing it right-handed. So he's essentially playing it upside down. Yeah. So I guess when he switched to left-handed, he was just like, look, it's easier for me this way. Which is funny because on a guitar, you would think that the high notes would be at the top of the neck and that the low notes would be at the bottom, but it's actually the opposite. But not for him, though. That's pretty interesting to me. If you guys know of any other popular guitarist or artist that plays like that, I'm interested to hear it. That's pretty unique, if you ask me. But overall, this just sounds fun. I mean, it just sounds like a blast to play. You know, if I ever was an expert guitarist, or at least skilled in some way, this is one of the first songs that I would uh, like to learn. Yeah, that reverb. <laughs> yeah, I love it.
That's crazy. <laughs> that was completely bonkers. Like I said, though, that iconic sound. Yeah, that's like yeah, his signature. Dude, come on. Oh, yeah. Man. That's his. Nobody else can take that from him. Come on. <laughs> and I feel like he was actually taking it easy. Yeah. <laughs> that would yeah. to be honest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but you got to crown him, though. Crown him. Give him the crown. King, the king. of the guitar? The king of serve guitar. Yeah, yeah you yeah, can yeah. tell, like, the way he plays. It sounds islandy. I say this all the time, though. When somebody is just thrashing on a guitar like that, give props to the bass and drums. Oh, yeah. You, you got to keep up. You got to keep up with that. You got to keep that tempo right, the timing. And I feel like they did a great job. So shout out to them as well. Yeah, it's just a pleasure watching a master at his craft. And I feel like stamina is kind of underrated here, too. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. I feel like a lot of guitar purists are like, well, you know, surf rock, it, it's not that tricky compared to this and that. It's like, dude, come on. You try. Yeah, you, you try to play that. But I love how it embodies the ocean, though. Because like I said, this is fun, but it sounds hectic at the same time. Just like when you're in the ocean, you know, you just got to keep aware of your surroundings and just be ready because you never know when you're going to get hit with something. And even if you're not a music aficionado, do yourself a favor. Check out some surf rock because I'm telling you right now, if you like guitar, it's up your alley. Rockabilly. Psycho Billy, Surf Rock, that type of thing, you will find a lot of gems. Yeah, many thanks to Dick Dell for being an innovator and creating this type of music. You know, it's clear that his work paved the way for a multitude of musicians. That was fantastic, man. Uh, hats off to him. That's it, guys. Don't forget to drop a like. And as always, please tell us your views. Thank you for subscribing and clicking that bell. Peace, Peace out. out.